We're in the middle of Hillfield, Frari, which covers about 19 acres. Well, there are about six or seven houses here, I think, comprising Franciscan brothers and community members who are living here for different periods of time. Well, I've got a huge association with this place. I've known it for 53 years. Over that period of time, it's changed a lot, and in some ways it stayed very much the same, but it's a Franciscan friary, and it's perfect, really, for uh, doing a modern version of the story of Francis. And set. Action! This is the courtyard where we're going to be shooting quite a lot of scenes. One scene it's going to be the meeting between Sultan Melek El Camille and Francis uh, when Francis crossed the Saracen lines to, to try and convert the Sultan to Christianity. So we're going to cover this whole courtyard with chalk crosses because he played a, a trick on Francis by having a huge carpet which was covered in crosses and seeing if Francis would, would go across it. Well, we're going to use hopefully all of the people here in the community as extras. One or two of them will play tiny little parts where they may have one line uh, because the rest, part, rest of the parts will be played by professional actors. But I want them to be in the film because the film is multi-layered. It has the story of Francis in modern costume. It also has a Franciscan community which is living here, living out the principles that Francis espoused during his lifetime. So I want to show that in a modern context as well. The themes that are in the story of Francis are multitudinous. But curiously, Francis, although he lived over 800 years ago, is very relevant to a modern audience. He is the patron saint in the environment, after all. But he speaks to us today on many, many levels. He speaks to us over sustainability, living simply, all of which we've got to start taking on board more and more as, as we move into a, a different world. He speaks to us on, in terms of Meditation and contemplation, that side which a, a whole host of people would take to themselves, even if they're not religious, they might be Buddhist, they might not adhere to any form of religion at all, but practice meditation. And he speaks to all of that because of his very simple approach to prayer and contemplation. speaks to us about humility and joy. I think I could go on forever. He speaks to us of reconciliation, particularly between Muslims and Christians. That was very much part of his calling and one of the stories which will feature very strongly in the film. He speaks to us about brothers and sisters, about people being equal, which again, I think is hugely relevant to a modern audience. We don't live actually in, a, in an equal society. It's probably becoming more divided between rich and poor, but it would make sense to redress that balance. Um, and Francis certainly leads the way on that. As you go, preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead. I am an actor. I've spent most of my life in the theater. I've spent some of it directing. Uh, this filming is a new departure for me, but it feels very comfortable. Yes, I am a Franciscan. Uh, it, within the Franciscan family, in Francis's day, uh, they, he, he developed three orders. In his day, they had the brothers in the first order. Today, we have brothers and sisters in the first order who sort of are separate but, but together in the society. Then he started a second order because there are uh, people who want to live a contemplative life. So the poor Clares form the second order and they are contemplative. And then the third order were people who wanted to join Francis, but were married or couldn't give up their jobs, had families, had jobs. And uh, so he started the third order, which was specifically for people who uh, couldn't live in community, but wanted to live a religious lifestyle. And I'm one of those peculiar people. First of all, just to say welcome to the Frari. 
and on behalf of the Ferrari community, which we're not all here, um, the children are away at school and, um, and other people are away on holiday uh, and other people are, I don't know what they're doing, but anyhow, um, this isn't all the community here, but on behalf of the community, welcome to you and um, we hope that you have, it's not just a time of very hard work for you, but it's actually a time of, uh, of refreshment and, uh, and a good experience for you. The guiding spirit here at the moment is Brother Sam. I'm Sam, Brother Sam. I'm the guardian here at the Frari. And I've lived here on and off for the last 40 years. The, the, the film crew and actors and those all, all who are here are going to come to morning tea break. And then curious. The guardian is a kind of person who coordinates and uh, I've been involved really trying to help to reshape it, to refound the community here so that it's not just a, a community of Franciscan brothers, you know but it's a community which has other people living in it and sharing in its life, but remains profoundly Franciscan in its ethos, in its prayer, in its hospitality, in its style of life. I'll be doing desk work and phones and things. I'll be sort of working with Sarah. I'll do some fruit. I'll try and get some bread on the go. Yogurt. Yogurt. And fruits. Okay. So there's enough to keep us going today. Let's pray. A quiet, please. Mark it. One, take one. We haven't quite been under the lens of a camera before, so it'd be interesting to see how we cope with it, really. Because we want to be quite sort of unselfconscious about the life as well. We want, don't want to sort of promote this or promote this place or promote anything, really. We just want to do it. I want you to get out of the way. Come on, out of the way. We're a bit anxious because we took their head cow from the herd off earlier in the week. She went off to the abattoir to get killed. So it's the first time moving them without her, so we're not sure quite how they're gonna respond. But if it all goes wrong, you're not allowed to put it on your documentary. <laughs> I was wrong when you asked me what's the worst thing that happened. <laughs> That's the worst if they go to Vincent's Secret Garden <laughs> and trash it and die from eating rhododendrons. Places which become a bit sort of too self-preoccupied tend to lose their focus a bit, really. And I suppose if you ask what the focus is here, um, above all, it's, it, it, it's the presence of God in Jesus Christ, um, a consciousness of being um, loved and gifted by God, uh, but also a, a sense of responsibility and for and delight in all that we have here, that we are part of a community of all creation here. And two things I think really have helped us with that. I mean, one is, one is having other creatures here. I mean, having livestock here gives you a sense of some responsibility and care. I mean, they need care and they need love and respect. But the other thing which has really made a difference is, is, is having children here. It's such a good, such a good thing for us, such a good thing for us brothers, but I think actually for also all other people here too. It's very good for us, it makes us play. Here it feels like being part of a big family, making the definition of family bigger than just my nuclear family who I have blood ties to, it, it includes everybody. You care about them and you love them even when it's difficult and I think that's what community is about. I think we can't continue the way we have been with the land and we can't continue with the lifestyle we have been living as a, as a, as a world. It's just the consumerism is just really hurting the planet and Francis offers an alternative to that.
I'm not terribly religious at all, but I feel very, very strongly about nature and people living in harmony with it and people living in harmony with one another. And I think that's absolutely what Francis was talking about. And so if people were able to sort of get a bit of that spirit and just think, actually, yeah, I will look after someone else, I will pick up a bit of rubbish and put it in the bin, I will bring that into my life, I think that'd be a great thing. We live in a world where we get a lot of uh, feedback from the media. A lot of it's very um, worrying and very um, damaging, really. And I think anything that sends out a different message, an alternative message, is, is for the good, as far as I'm concerned. We are very caught up in um, artificial stuff. And we are not grounded enough, that's what I think. And therefore I think it is relevant to our time. Lord, you have taught us that all our doings without love are nothing worth. Send They've got the, the daily rhythm of prayer. It's uh, an attempt to make a more contemplative, reflective uh, view on life, welcoming people, um, looking at issues of peace and justice, but also trying to live as much as possible in harmony with nature and producing our own food and having a lighter footprint on the planet. It's a fascinating story. You, you can't help but be uh, fascinated by it. Uh, it's very inspiring. What well, made me think, I'm talking personally, um, you know, and since coming here, and just how one goes about doing things, um, you know, relationships uh, with others. I think that people have a lot of queries in their own minds. That sense of unease when they look around the world, the sense of unease when they think about the destruction of the planet, the sense of unease when they sense the poverty of people in other, uh, in other countries and indeed in our own. If anybody give me two stones, they will receive two blessings. We kind of felt, you know, the time was right for people to know more about Francis. It's the love for other people and, and it's an action-orientated love for other people. And that was really, that was demonstrated by Francis in the way that he treated lepers, in the way that he gave away his, his clothes to the poor, and gave everything away to the poor. Because he's quite a complex and unusual character. People think of this very quiet saint, and yet actually he's this very passionate troubadour who's kind of a little bit crazy at times. Well, it made me think, I'm talking personally, um, you know, and since coming here, and just how one goes about doing things, um, you know, relationships uh, with others. You know, whereas uh, here at Hillfield, you, uh, uh, you, you think about what you do and, and how you do it. Um, you think about people and, uh, you know, as relationships. I, I'd like people's response to the film to be A, that they've sat and watched a rattling good story because the, the, the story of Francis is an amazing story. He was an extraordinary character and lived, I mean, he only lived 44 years, but within that space of time, he packed in an enormous amount. Secondly, I want them to go away with the fact that Franciscanism is alive and well, that actually it is working extraordinarily well in our modern society, if you look at a place like this that it isn't divorced from reality. And I would love people to go away with a feeling that, that the film had, has given them a lot to think about.